Kind of my assignment in the conference is such that living to the glory of God becomes the fixed point whereby God's people can stand firm. Mm. If you um, if you can if you can make a decision and rightly say uh, through the truth of God's word, you know that this would glorify God, then you're going to stand firm. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what the purpose was in this First Corinthians ten thirty one. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, to go to your, uh, di to directly go to your question, uh, the scripture says that living to the glory of God is comprehensive. It's not just, well, here's the part of my life I do to the glory of God and over here it doesn't matter. No, it's, it's uh, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, you do all to the glory of God. It's comprehensive. Now, notice your life apart from Christ was comprehensively falling short of the glory of God. Now, once Christ becomes your life, now we who fell short of the glory of God, our greatest delight is the glory of God. That's why our catechism says the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. So this is not only comprehensive, it's eternal. So, um, so that means there's two ways we glorify God. One is in gathered worship as God's people, and then the other is in what I call lifestyle worship. I, I, um, Paul says after he develops the gospel in Romans, he then says, therefore I urge you in view of God's mercies to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of worship. So life is worship. Everything we do is doxological and we're to aim at it that way. I do my work to the Lord. I love my wife as Christ loves the church. I am to, um, I am to engage in parenting in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Everything has, has the glory of God as the circumference, the center and the substance of life. To narrow in on work just a little bit more, there has been a growing trend, particularly among younger generations uh, today, that's really anti-work, that they're, they're pushing against the idea of, of working hard and working faithfully. What would you say to the, a Christian, particularly a young Christian, that might be surrounded by that, that particular conversation? Oh, yeah, I'd say, here's what I'd say. You better get in love with work quick or you'll be doing it forever. I don't, I, heaven's not gonna be without work. Mm. I think we're gonna work, uh, I think we're gonna play, I think we're gonna rest. Uh, I think we're going to learn. You're going to learn. Man, you'll never exhaustively. We'll never know God completely. Uh, so uh, we can know God accurately, but we can't know Him exhaustively. And uh, the same thing. He, I mean, work was not part of the fall. Work was part of the creation. So redemption now reclaims work from the curse of sin. What's going to be absent in our work in the new heavens and the new earth is the thorns and thistles. But we're going to work, so you might as well go ahead and fall in love with it again and make it an act of worship. It's not, it's not the way I make money. It's not how I make my living. It's how I live for Christ. I do my work heartily as unto the Lord. Let me give it to you this way. We've got this word professional. And the word professional, this is my, my little disagreement uh, with, uh, and I don't think it's really a disagreement. John Piper wrote a book one time, Gentlemen Were Not Professionals. Well, I think we are because the root of the concept of professional comes out of the Reformation where they said vocation, work, is calling. Therefore, the way you do your work is a profession of your faith. That's the origin of the word professional. It wasn't, it wasn't elite work. It was anybody's work was to be done as a profession of your faith. People could get a sense of your faith in Christ by watching the way you work. Dr. Harry Reid, the senior pastor at the Briarwood Presbyterian Church, was killed Thursday morning in a car crash near Donovante Valley Road in Shelby County. The church's executive pastor Bruce Stallings posted to the congregation's Facebook page Thursday afternoon confirming the news. It is with deep, heavy heart that I communicate to you that our road has called past Reed home through a car accident stalling road. Please pray for Cindy, Jennifer, 
EKRB and their entire family as well as our staff and church family as well as all grief this tremendous loss to get. Was also active at Briarwood Christian School, regularly speaking at chapel services and several school events. The school posted the news across its social media platforms Thursday afternoon. Briarwood said all school activities have been cancelled for the evening including the spring football game originally scheduled for Thursday night. Ken Friday has been a member of the church since 1985. He considered Reader not only his pastor but a dear friend. He said Reader was a leader with a servant's heart. The loss of Harry Reader is something that's devastating, disappointing in the sense of that we will have to grieve. It's a tremendous loss and unexpected. Yet we know that God holds all these things in his hand. We also know we don't grieve without hope because we know he is with the Lord now, said Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.